Uh, again, launching out of Launch Complex 37 at six hours prior to liftoff, the, uh, the launch vehicle will be powered and fueled. The mobile service tower will be rolled back. Orion will be activated. And then at uh, 6.05 uh, Central Time, we'll lift off from Cape Canaveral. The uh, Delta IV Heavy and its three liquid uh, boosters will take us uh, out of the Earth's atmosphere. And uh, roughly three and a half minutes into the mission, the uh, liquid uh, boosters will separate. The core will shut down, the, the liquid core will shut down about four minutes into the mission and then the uh, upper stage will ignite. After the upper stage ignition, the service module fairings will separate and the launch abort system will, will be jettisoned and Orion will continue its climb to orbit. We'll achieve orbital insertion about 17 minutes into the mission and we'll begin our first lap around the Earth. At uh, an hour and 55 minutes into the mission, we'll do our stage two burn two and that'll set up that uh, high Earth orbit, as well as our entry interface. During that time frame, we'll be in a barbecue roll, which is uh, rotating about the long axis, and uh, we'll pass up through the Van Allen radiation belts, a, a period where uh, we, we expect to see uh, elevated radiation, and uh, we may see some effects on some of our electronics uh, that uh, Mark Geyer briefed earlier. At Apogee, we'll see uh, the Earth from 3,600 miles up out the uh, hatch window. Uh, it'll be about the size of a six foot disc held at arm's length at that point. And then we'll uh, come back around and separate Orion from the uh, service module in the upper stage. We'll activate the uh, attitude control system, orient the heat shield forward, and then Orion will begin its trial by fire. During the uh, reentry, the plasma outside the heat shield could see temperatures up to 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. After the uh, peak heating period, the uh, heat shield is no longer uh, required. So at that point, we'll jettison the forward bay cover, which is a heat shield that covers up the parachute system, and then begin the parachute's uh, deploy sequence. Uh, at that point, Orion will uh, start to drift down on some pilot chutes, and then three main parachutes will be deployed. They will slowly uh, unfurl to uh, provide a, a measured deceleration on the vehicle. And then they'll finally uh, achieve their full open state, leading up to splashdown in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of the, uh, of the Baja. After uh, we splash down, we'll keep the spacecraft powered up to gather some data using the uh, flight instrumentation. We expect uh, some amount of heat from the reentry to soak back into the, uh, the structure and we want to understand and uh, characterize the uh, cabin environment before we put our astronauts in there uh, to understand just how hot it's going to be in the cabin. Uh, the uh, crew module uprighting system will uh, inflate and, uh, if necessary, upright the crew module leading up to uh, the recovery operation. After we power down the spacecraft, uh, I'll call uh, Jeremy Graber uh, on the recovery ship and let him know the health and status of the spacecraft. And then once we've uh, verified that the health and status is safe on the spacecraft, the recovery forces will come in and uh, recover it. Uh, some small boats will be deployed and then they'll, they'll begin a, a towing operation into the well deck of the recovery ship. <laughs> this mission is significant in that uh, it enables human spaceflight to, uh, to deep space and to destinations that uh, we have yet to have imagined.